Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Every difficult thing that God asks you to do, he's not just trying to make you miserable. He's trying to get you in a place where he can do so much more in your life than what you could ever possibly imagine. Tonight I want to talk to you about a merciful and a forgiving attitude. I've just recently written a book called Do Yourself a Favor and Forgive. And just in the process of writing that book, I was just reminded and refreshed in my heart again about how important it is that we are not angry Christians. An angry Christian is an oxymoron. Do you know that? I looked up the word love the other day in the Greek dictionary. I like to study love real frequently because it keeps me moving in that direction and I know that's the will of God. So I looked up the word love again just to kind of refresh myself and one of the things that it said is that love is the central theme of Christianity. Now, bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness is not love. Anger is not love. So if love is the central theme of Christianity, then How can we be angry Christians and think that's okay? And you know, just because we come to church and put a smile on our face when we hit the church door, that doesn't mean that we don't have anger issues. Some of you don't, but many of you may have been angry when you walked in here. You may have even come with somebody that you're angry at. You may have already gotten angry about something since you got in the building. You didn't get the seat you wanted. They didn't sing the song you hoped they would sing. You, the lights bother you. Or, you know, we, we get angry about some of the goofiest, most ridiculous things. Now, I want you to listen to me because this is very important tonight. Most of the ground that Satan gains in the life of a believer is gained through the open door of unforgiveness. Most of the ground that Satan gains in the life of the believer is gained through that open door of unforgiveness. Let's look at two scriptures. 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. And these, of course, are going to be up on the, the screens for you. I teach, as you probably know, from an Amplified Bible. If you forgive anyone anything... This is the Apostle Paul talking. If you forgive anyone anything, I too forgive that one. And what I have forgiven, if I have forgiven anything, has been for your sakes. In the presence and with the approval of Christ the Messiah. Now verse 11, he's going to say why he's so willing to forgive. And why he wants them to be so willing to forgive. To keep Satan from getting an advantage over us. For we are not ignorant of his wiles and intentions. It's possible, just possible, that some of you here tonight who have some kind of a problem in your life, somehow or another the enemy has gotten in. You may be praying and asking God to remove that problem, but yet you have not been willing to forgive someone that has hurt you. You can't get your prayers answered. If you're not going to forgive. Well, Joyce, you don't know how I feel. I don't mean this to be rude, but I'm just going to say it. I don't really care how you feel. <laughs> And I don't mean that like I don't care like I don't care. But I mean, we have to get over caring so much about how we feel. I wish we could feel good all the time. But the truth is, is we're not going to feel good all the time. And one of the scriptures I'm going to read you a little bit later is in Colossians. And it says, to put on... Mercy. To put on mercy. And do you know that you can purposely choose to be merciful? Now, mercy is not fair. I mean, there's nothing fair about mercy. Because when you're merciful, you're giving somebody something that they don't deserve. You're deciding to let something go that if you just wanted to be really legalistic about it, you could just say, well, I am just not going to let you get by with that because what you did was wrong. But the Bible says to put on mercy and above all that you put on, 
to put on love. And one of the most valuable things in my life in the last 10 or 15 years is to learn to do what's right on purpose. Not because I feel like it, but to do it on purpose. And actually to learn even further that when I do what's right, when I don't feel like doing what's right, that's when I'm actually growing spiritually. When I do what's right because I feel like it and it's easy and it's not a struggle, then I'm operating in something that I've already grown in at some other time when I was doing what was right when it was hard. So don't think it's always going to be easy to do the right thing, but just remember when you are doing the right thing and it's difficult to do it, the good news is, is you can say, I'm growing. I am growing spiritually by making the right choice. Don't be weary in well-doing. Ephesians 4, 26. When you're angry, don't sin. I like that because you can be angry and not sin. Anger itself is not necessarily a sin. It's actually emotion that God has put in us to let us know when we're being mistreated. So anger is not necessarily a sin. It's what we do with that anger that becomes a sin. Don't ever let your wrath, your exasperation, your fury, or your indignation last until the sun goes down. Wow. Wonder how many people are here in church tonight worshiping God, praying for their needs to be met that went to bed angry last night. You know, you can be home and have a fight with your spouse, and you can go to bed angry even though the Holy Spirit's dealing with you and you know full well that you should humble yourself and go to them and try to make it right even if it's not your fault because <laughs> that's the big one isn't it well it's not my fault and they need to come to me <laughs> when God tells us to forgive people he's not really just trying to find something difficult for us to do so he can sit back and watch us sweat Everything, now listen to this. If you didn't come for anything but this tonight, this will be worth you being here. Everything that God asked you to do is something that if you do it will benefit you in the long run. Everything, everything, every hard thing that God is asking you to do right now, if there's something he's asking you to give up, or something he's asking you to do that you don't want to do. He's asking you to stay somewhere where you'd love to run away from or stick with a person that you would love to just get away from. Every difficult thing that God asks you to do. He's not just trying to make you miserable. He's trying to get you in a place where he can do so much more in your life than what you could ever possibly imagine. And I'm just praying that God will use my mouth tonight to get somebody to understand that you have to get beyond all these feelings of anger and feelings of bitterness and, and feelings of not wanting to, to talk to somebody that's hurt your feelings. And you have to do the greater thing and do it God's way. Because if you can get all of the strife and all the bitterness and resentment and anger out of your life and you can keep it out of your life you will be absolutely amazed at what God will be able to do for you I wonder how many people maybe are praying for that miracle but they've not been willing to let go of that thing you'd be shocked really to know how many people are sitting in here tonight wonderful Lakewood people people from around this area you sing the songs, you have the bumper sticker. <laughs> you have your Christian jewelry on. You brought your Bible and maybe your 26 translation Bible. I don't know. You will buy the CD, but yet you're mad at somebody. You don't really think that anybody else should be mad at anybody, but in your case, it's justified. Because after all, we just don't understand what happened to you. Well, you know, when Jesus was being crucified, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When Paul was being stoned, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And if we can come to the point of understanding what I'm getting ready to share with you, I believe it can be life-changing. Something that God whispered in my heart last year a few times, and I'm just like, wow. He said, Joyce, when somebody hurts you, 
you need to be a lot more concerned about what they're doing to themselves than what they're doing to you. Because you see, God doesn't take it very kindly when people hurt his children. We got any moms and dads in here? How do you act when somebody hurts one of your kids? I mean, I get like, <laughs> oh, you do just about anything but hurt one of my kids. I'm going to have a hard time being a Christian on that day. <laughs> Amen? And God does not like it when people are unjust and unkind to his children. And when they judge them and criticize them and do ungodly things to them. And I really believe that we need to learn. That's why the Bible says to pray for your enemies. We need to pray for our enemies. Because really what they did to us can't really do much to us if we don't let it. They're the ones that need the help. Don't let the sun go down on your anger anymore. Now here you're going to say, well, I can't help how I feel. I can't help how I feel. We're not talking about how you feel. We're talking about the decision you make. Do you know that I have found out that if I get mad at Dave, that I can go in the room and talk to him whether I feel like it or not? And you see, when you're mad at somebody, the first thing you want to do is shut them out of your life. Up goes the walls. I mean, I, you know, I go out the front door and walk around and come in the back door rather than have to walk through the room where he's at. <laughs> come on, is anybody with me tonight? But I have found out that I can choose to walk in that room and say, are you enjoying the football game? Can I get you something to drink? Love you. I'm going to bed. Quickly. <laughs> How many of you believe that all this anger stuff is a big problem for Christians? Well, you know what? We have got to do something about it. Each one of us has to take responsibility personally to say, I am not going to live angry. Now, you cannot always do anything about how you feel, but you can do something about what you do because you have free choice. And if we do the right thing long enough, our feelings will follow along later. I must say that again. If we do the right thing long enough, our feelings will follow along later. One of the things that happens when you pray for your enemies is it gets really hard to stay mad at somebody that you're praying for. And so you can start by doing that. Praying for people that hurt you. Pray for them. And another thing you can do when you're angry is get the word out and study in that area. You know, if, if I've got a headache, I don't stick a Band-Aid on my head. And when you're angry at somebody, you don't need a message on prosperity. You need to get in here and you need to study anger and bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness. And you need to study it and study it until the word breaks through and breaks that bondage off of you. Then your prosperity will follow suit. <laughs> Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, the right way of being and doing. And all of these things will be added unto you. Seek the kingdom. Seek to do things the way God wants you to do them, and God will add the blessings. You don't have to chase blessings. Let them chase you. Yeah. Philippians 2.5 says that we are to take on the same attitude that Jesus had. And it goes on to talk about how he humbled himself. You know, humility, I think, is probably the most beautiful attitude that we can work to develop. Probably one of the hardest to come by. But true humility is probably one of the most beautiful attributes and attitudes that Jesus wants to teach us. And I believe that it's impossible to be merciful without humility. Not too long ago, I'm sad to say, I got madder than I've been in a long time. I was actually shocked at how mad I got. It was at a relative, not Dave, thank God. <laughs> Dave and I have been married so long now, we just don't even bother getting mad. <laughs> just 44 years last January, it's like, why fight? <laughs> but I got mad at somebody, I'm not going to go into 
into all the details. I did tell the story in full in the book that I just wrote, but I felt like the person was just really, really, really being ridiculous and putting undue pressure on me at a time when I didn't need undue pressure, and I just asked them to do a simple little thing, and they had to, you know, have a cow over it, and I was just like, I, did, I mean, I just blew up, and I don't normally do that, and I told her off. And I told everybody what she did to me. <laughs> I told Dave. I, told, I called my kids up and told my kids. <laughs> Which is one of the things that's a no-no. We're going to talk about that tonight. Because love covers. Love doesn't expose. Love covers. Love tries to protect somebody else's relationship. It doesn't try to ruin it. But I was so mad. That I not only didn't want to like her, I didn't want anybody else to like her. <laughs> Doesn't it make you mad when you're, when somebody has hurt you and you're with somebody else who knows them and they start telling you how nice they are? <laughs> Don't you want to just say, well, you know, let me tell you a thing or two. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, I was firm and I felt justified in my anger. And so... Three days went by. I kept waiting for her to call me and apologize. No phone call. One morning I was praying. You know, it's hard to pray when you're not obeying God. Because when you pray, he's likely to say something to you you don't want to hear. So I was praying one morning, and I guess enough days had gone by now that God could finally get through to me a little bit. And he started putting on my heart that he wanted me to call her and apologize to her. I was just, I can tell you, I just went, oh, God, no. No, 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 no. Please not this time. Could you make somebody else do what's right and not me? This woman is a Christian, too. So I waited a while longer. I was just sure that, you know, she was going to use it as, well, yes, you did hurt me, and yes, you did me, yes, you did so I even just said, okay, God, I'm going to do this because I love you and I want to be obedient to you. But would you please at least have her say, I was wrong too. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I can do this if I don't have to take the full brunt of the responsibility. So I called halfway hoping she wouldn't answer the phone because a lot of times she doesn't. <laughs> but lo and behold, she was home that day, of course, to talk to me. And, you know, I just, I, I said, you know, listen, I just want to tell you that I'm sorry I got so angry the other day. And I mean, right away she said, you know what? No, don't, don't think anything about it. She said, I didn't act right either. And it was just so nice. And then it was just like, whew, all that pressure left. I could pray. I was working on my book, and so that helped. <laughs> But I couldn't have done that if I wouldn't have been willing to have humbled myself and let her think that I would, you know, I didn't really think I was wrong. But I realized that even though what she did was wrong, for me to respond that way was just as wrong. See, even when somebody does something wrong to you, the anger that you have and begin to spew around is just as wrong. I think that we need to develop a much more easygoing attitude. And you know, in the natural, I wouldn't be a real easygoing person, but I've developed a lot more of that attitude in my life. You know why? It's just really hard on you if you don't get to the point sooner or later where you can just be a little more easygoing and not just make mountains out of molehills and not have to have everything a certain way in your life. There's a scripture that I absolutely love. I think it's one of the most beautiful portions of scripture in the Bible, and it's found in Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in heart. Isn't that beautiful? Humble, gentle, meek, and lowly. And then I love the rest of it. He says, you will find ease 
and refreshment and recreation and blessed quiet for your souls. See, the minute I was willing to humble myself and apologize to somebody just for the sake of peace, even though I thought she should be apologizing to me, the reward that I got immediately was rest for my soul, ease and quiet for my soul. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, and I love this part in the Amplified Bible. It is not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing. I was raised by a man, my father, who was very harsh and hard and quick-tempered and sharp. And anytime you were around him, there was nothing but pressure. And sad to say, I became a lot like that in the earlier years of my life very legalistic you know if you're not merciful then you're going to be legalistic you can't be both you're either going to be legalistic or you're going to be merciful and to be legalistic means that you have certain specific expectations of people and situations and if those expectations are not met then you are going to get upset and normally you are going to let somebody know them now obviously we want to expect good things we want to expect the best out of life. But I'll tell you something that we cannot expect out of people, and that's perfection. We are not perfect. We're not going to find a perfect church. We're not going to find a perfect job. You're not going to find somebody perfect to be married to. You're not going to find a perfect kid. If we were perfect, we would not need Jesus. We all, A-double-L, -L, all have weaknesses. We all have strengths. But we also all have weaknesses. And that's why the Bible is filled with the message that we must be quick to forgive. We must be generous with our forgiveness. We must always believe the best of every person. And we must, we must, we must, we must develop a merciful attitude where our first response is, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I make mistakes too. Instead of, what? <laughs> How could you do that to me? <laughs> and what's the tone behind that? How could you be so dumb to make that kind of a mistake and wound perfect me? <laughs> but see, a humble person knows what a mess they are. A humble person knows that if it were not for the grace of God, the mercy of God, the love of God, the forgiveness of God, the kindness of God, oh my gosh, what a shape we would be in. That's why the story in Matthew is so important when Peter said, how many times shall I forgive my brother? I love that. How many times shall I forgive my brother? I guess Peter thought he had a limit. And I know we all think, and I think this, you know, if you do that one more time, <laughs> then I have reached my limit. And Jesus went on to tell a story about a man who couldn't pay his debt. And he asked to be forgiven, and his master forgave him. And then that same man, that same man... <laughs> Come on, if you're mad tonight, you are that man. <laughs> I said, if you're angry tonight, you are that man. Because you could not pay your debt, and you asked God to forgive you, and he forgave you quickly. He was merciful to you, and will be merciful to you and to me every time that we go to him with our weaknesses. Every time, he'll be merciful to us. So how can we then refuse to forgive people who hurt us? Hmm. It's quiet in here. <laughs> what are your expectations of people? Dave and I had so many problems for so many years until we finally just accepted each other the way that we, we were. And we actually had a meeting in the kitchen 
and shook hands and looked at each other. And I said, I accept you the way you are. And he said, and I accept you the way you are. Now, that doesn't mean that we didn't both need change. But you know what? Only God can change people. You're not going to change somebody by being mad about them being the way that they are because they may change for a while to try to suit you, but if God doesn't do a work in their heart, whatever it is they were doing that you demanded they stop is just going to pop up somewhere else. Maybe in a different way, but it'll pop up somewhere else. That's why it's so much better to pray for people. And yes, you can talk to people. You know, mercy doesn't mean that you never confront. Jesus confronted. He confronted people. He confronted issues, but he still loved the people. You have to learn to not expect everybody in your life to be perfect. Because you know what? None of us are. Well, you know, the more time we spend around people, the more opportunity there is for them to hurt us or for their flaws to become apparent. We need to learn how to develop an attitude of mercy toward people's failures, keeping in mind that we will need that same mercy at some other time in our own life. We really want to have great relationships, and the way to do that is to be quick to forgive.